welcome everybody. I've got Double D here with me as Earworm. I have got this eight, or well, I got this basically today. I'm going to go through the one-way coring process that I've done one time. I've got basically half of a log here of red oak. Let me take Daniel off screen. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you guys how I go about marking the center and cutting it on my bandsaw and then get to the coring process. So first off, all I do is take this compass here, kind of guesstimate the center. I don't have to mark or measure anything. And then I kind of play guess where the center is based on the gap on either end of the wood, 180 degrees apart. And then I'll adjust as necessary and then find the maximum diameter I can get. And then from left to right, I always cut my logs a little longer to hopefully reduce any cracking I have on the ends once I cut it. And then once I mark a center, I just kind of push it and I will drill a hole with my drill to allow the pin on my circle cutting jig to fit. So I'll drill about one inch depth and then I'll have to switch cameras to my bandsaw. Dee Dee, if you want to go through who's in the chat, that will be cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, so far we have Brian at Heartwood Turning, Dan over at CDA Wood Turning, Chris Spinning Wood Dodger, Keith with Circular Wood by Keith, uh, Adam with I Love Wood Turning, John S is in, Lawrence Bugasia, uh, Steve P at Fenrica Wood Stuff, Steve T at Temple Boy Turnings, Tommy's Workshop, and William Ellis. All right. So I've got my circle cutting jig here. This is as close as my camera can get, so I'll zoom in in a moment, but I got a little metal pin here. What I do first is I take those that compass I use to mark the center of the wood and align it to the blade with one point, and then I'll adjust the pin to the other point to make sure I get the same radius on the wood that I marked. And then I pull it out a little and set the log down. And then you have to kind of look from underneath to align the hole with the pin. And Doug Miller has joined. Good morning, Doug, as well as Ruby Claire. Good morning, everyone. Now I'll try to zoom in a bit so you guys can get a better view. So now it's on the pin. So now I just turn on the bandsaw. I'll push it in and then start rotating it once the front block comes in contact with the table.
All right, I guess I was trying to go a little too fast. It sounds like I broke or tripped a breaker. So I will press the little reset button. I can find it. Don't and while you're doing that, Robert Dolman has joined. Good morning, Robert, as has Alvaro Woodturney. Good morning, good morning. Apologies for this. I typically, this is the first time I've ever done this. Maybe the blade is getting short. i got to find... Steve wants to know if your bandsaw was crying or if that was Harry's mating call. Yeah, that was the bandsaw. <laughs> I think the breaker is actually the one in my house, so I'm going to run in real quick and go trip flip it. Sorry about that, guys. It happens. It's all good. Ruby said that stockroom supply makes a jig that allows us to cut allows you to cut blanks like that. So it's a circle cutting jig. I know you made yours. Might have to look at that, Ruby, because I'll be looking to get one and have to see what we can do. Can you hear me, Hodge? Might have got out of room range for his Bluetooth. Good morning, James Cassidy. Welcome. Good morning, Lewis. Hodge flipped a breaker uh, with his bandsaw and is working to get it taken care of. Real quickly in the chat, I'm going to pop in uh, a link to I Love Wood Turning Adam's channel. If you haven't subscribed to him, he's just under the 100 subscriber mark. He's going to have a premiere tomorrow um, at 7 o'clock p.m. GMT, so two at 1 o'clock Central Time, right after mine. Uh, so check over to go over to Adam's channel and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, he's hoping to start doing lives here pretty soon, if I remember correctly, as well. Yeah, Steve T and Tommy, yes. If it's going to go wrong, the live is the best place for it, I think.
William, I think he when he went inside to get um, to fix the breaker, I think that his Bluetooth might have disconnected. I'm trying to get his attention through the StreamYard chat as well. Good morning, Gav. Welcome. Hey guys, can you hear me? Hey, we can hear you now. Can you guys hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Still no audio. I hear you fine. They're saying they can hear you too. Maybe you guys just can't hear me. Might be a good thing though. Cool. Yeah, Chris, I agree. Harry does look to be very happy this morning for some reason. I don't know what's going on with this headset. Daniel? Yep, I can hear you. All right, cool. For some reason I just got muted. Okay, cool. Good. Ruby really appreciates the beaver supervising. Steve T said that he looked twice just to make sure that was actually the spindle that was sticking out of the lathe. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the spindle. So I'm hoping to get three, well, two bowls and maybe a little sh shallow bowl, but not, I'm not sure I got the space to get three of them out of it. Still a nice looking piece of red oak, though. And Dave B has joined. Good morning, Dave. While you were out, Gav also joined. All right, cool. So I'll get this mounted on the spindle or on the headstock. And bring up this tail stock for support. I know that with the bark edge, the tail stock, it's kind of weird, but I'll just, once I get some of the bark off, I'll readjust the tail stock. And then turn it, move the beavers back a little bit out of the way. Sorry, they're not on camera. There you go. They're laying down on the job now. Yeah. And put my face shield on. You're going to start it off at what, 1200 RPM? Yeah, something around there. <laughs> the good thing about the circle cutting jig is you can get it pretty round. So 
I'm at 500 RPMs right now. I'll switch the camera view to the tailstock. Dave B is excited that he finally found a live in his time zone. What time zone are you in, Dave? Steve, it's uh, really nice having a heavier lathe. Oh, that's right, Dave. Yeah, Dave is uh, here in Kansas with, with me. I, I apologize, sir. I'll move the tail rest a little bit. Yeah, Steve T, I think that uh, Hodge has just said that his lathe isn't a little more robust. <laughs> coffee before it falls off. Mole Valley Maker has joined and says that uh, has Sveti been instructed on workshop safety yet? Harry's given her the lowdown. He's told her all about the appropriate protection. Yes. And Fred Gilliver has joined. Hello, Fred. Hello, Fred. again. And Thomas Kowal Kowalczyk, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Good morning from New Hampshire. Welcome, Thomas. And remember, people, if you liked uh, Hodge's performance with his bandsaw and what he does here on the lathe, then make sure to mash that thumbs up. Patrick McNeese has joined. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Patrick. piece of bark. Remove the tail, tail rest or the banjo again. Gonna take away some more of this bark down here so I can get a better set on the tail stock. Turn the speed up a little bit. We're at. I noticed you're in a hoodie today, Hodge. What's the temperature in Texas? Eh, it's like 51 right now. Patrick said it's freezing up in Michigan. I can tell you right now that our high today is. We are at our high today of 23 degrees Fahrenheit, so minus 3 degrees, minus 4 degrees Celsius for all you UK people. Bailey Woodworks has joined. Hi, Chris. Welcome, Chris. Neil Gould has joined. Hello, Neil. Turn the speed up a little bit more. I'm at 650. Yeah, yesterday we had a high of 48 here in Kansas, and uh, the next eight to nine days we are not going to be above freezing. So.
Steve T said that it is three degrees Celsius in Ireland. I will trade you, sir, if you would like. It's about the right temperature to go back out to your uh, caravan and do some more wood burning, right, Steve T? And Pete from Twisted Trees has come in. Hi, Pete. Welcome, Pete. Let's see where we're at here. So I've got most, some of the bark gone, but still a lot of it to go. I'm going to try to go with the gradual curve similar to the original shape of the log just to try to get the maximum depth that I can in the cord bowls. Turning a tenon eventually to hold in my chuck. started on their flower challenge for February yet? I have not, but I have some really cool ideas, I think. Well, according to me. And Katie, the Cornish Maid 1982, has joined. Hello, Katie. Hi, Katie. Adam has a question. On the cutting tips of the coloring of the, on the coloring blades replaceable? Yes, not, they are. They're held in, they're held in by a little set screw. And you can take them off to sharpen them. You can also buy replacement carbide ones if you want, but they're fifty dollars a piece, so I haven't went that route yet. Steve T said he is starting his flower project this evening. I know that Nick at the Flaming Turner has been working on his. And I hope you don't mind, Adam, but uh, I'm going to share your link again to your channel. Um, Adam is closing in on the 100 subscriber mark, but he's going to have a premiere tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Time over on his channel, which will be right after mine, which is at 12.30 Central Time. So tune in and check out his premiere. And Di Prout has jumped in real quick. He's getting ready to set up for tonight's live. So welcome, Di. I think I might actually leave some of this bark on the outside because it'll be twice turned anyway, so I can remove it, but I still need to get away some of this bark that's still where the tenon will be. Guy's going to start with his flower project as soon as he's done with an order that he's got. Katie, where are you at, with the time zones? I don't know if you go off GMT or what time zone you go for. Oh, that's going to be a fun premiere then, uh, Adam. His premiere is a one-man installation of a 300-kilogram lathe. Okay, so Katie, you're in England, so that's going to be GMT, I believe. So you would be central time is GMT minus six. So that would be 7 p.m. your time. Yes, Ruby, he is going to use the one way system. And Mike, you has joined. Hi, Mike. Welcome, Mike. There we go, some wrenches I need later. 
So we've got a little bit left of this to get away for the tenon. Mike, you is also participating in the YouTube cross channel challenge for 2021, but since he doesn't have a YouTube channel, his stuff is on Instagram. So just make sure that you follow that hashtag on Instagram and social media, and you'll see all the posts that everybody does, as well as look for it on YouTube for the videos. Andrew Lobbin Pearson has joined. Hi, Andrew. Welcome. Going to remove some of this waste on the outside here to get it more in balance. Actually, switch tools because that one's getting a little dull. Hodge, do you find that some of your tools keep the edge better than others, or are they all pretty much the same? Yeah, I mean, these are Benjamin Best gouges that I got when I really started, so they're, you know, lower quality than the Henry Taylor one I just used in my Thompson gouge, so I feel like I can notice a difference from the entry level to the more, I guess, expensive ones, but as far as the difference between, say, Thompson and the other high quality ones, I, I don't really notice too big of a difference. Well, I only have one bowl gouge right now, so I'm hoping to get a few more so I can have different grinds on them and I'll be trying to figure out what to get. Steve T said that it depends on the steel and how it was hardened. He's a fan of the cryogenic tools, but a little biased. Um, I don't have, I don't know that I have enough money for those yet, Steve, but I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if this is the cryogenic one. I don't think so. Katie, first. Katie was asking where everybody was based. Uh, Hodge is based out of Texas in the US. I am based out of Kansas in the US, which is directly north. Uh, he and I are about 10 to 12 hours away from each other if we drove. I know there's quite a few people on from Ireland, the UK, other places in the US. Uh, Ruby's in Canada, I believe. So okay. I'm from all over little nub on the end and reposition my tailstock on some solid wood. I'm getting some weird shaking. And Leona Fay has joined. Greetings, Miss Leona. Steve, if you sell those, can you get me a discount with free shipping? Yeah, see, I think, I don't know if it's tools. Maybe I didn't sharp it very, very well earlier, but it seems kind of dull already. Yeah, the previous tool definitely wasn't sharp. Yeah, William, I agree. Dream on. He hasn't answered me, which tells me he's ignoring me. Probably because of my uh, 
you puns the other night. Neil, this is a piece of red oak that Hodge has that he's going to core out with his one-way coring system. All right, so we're almost to the final shape. Just a little bit left to go. Leona said I could get a 5% banana bunch discount. Um, yeah, but the shipping on that, Leona, to me would still be a bajillion dollars. And the you jokes have started, Hodge. You're missing out. Yeah. I wish I had some you to turn. And Ellis, William Ellis throws in Oak K. That's awesome. And Jigsy Shutt has joined. Hi, Jigsy. I know you can't stay long, but welcome. Welcome, Jigsy. Jigsy, we were talking earlier about the flower project. Uh, have you started yours yet, or you got an idea what you're doing? So I'm happy. As you can see, let me turn to the overhead camera for a minute. There's a bit of a void, which maybe I'll fill with an inlay later. But there's a big kind of thing going on. Get a big so, pressure pot. Yeah. Maybe I'll fill it with coffee or... Who knows? Maybe I'll buy some brass shavings or opal or whatever uh, soapstone. So I got to true off the tenon and get this one angled bit square. Let me see the diameter. Maybe I can. smaller and that takes away that curved bit too I think that should fit now Chris said that he thought about carving and painting a bag of flour like baking flour but I suppose it's not in the spirit of the challenge I actually was thinking of a play on words myself with that, Chris. I thought that'd be pretty funny if I could come up with a play on words or something that would change the whole challenge around just to mess with Quentin. I'm glad I'm not the only one. So now, yesterday when I did this, I ended up having the tenon a little too long, so I'm going to make it a little shorter. Steve said that you, with the yew tree reference there, know the coffee will leak out and make a mess, and then Harry will drink it and get wired and not be responsible and end up with baby beavers running around with poo goo everywhere. <laughs> so just be aware of that. Dave B. asks, how long has that chunk been drying? This has was cut down probably a couple of months ago, so it's pretty wet, but it's not as wet as those videos I sh uh filmed earlier where they're dripping water so you're not getting a shower at the same time no unfortunately not <laughs> 
But that's why you're rough turning them, right? So then you can dry them yeah. for a bit and then return them. Yeah. So let's hope this isn't too small. All right, this fits just about perfect. Take that off so it's not so heavy when I take it off. Ruby says when when she remounts the piece to core it, I leave the faceplate on. It makes putting a tenon on the cord pieces easier. Do you do the same? I've only cored once, but I guess that makes sense. But I think this first bowl is going to be, the smallest bowl is going to be pretty shallow, so... I think I'll take it off anyways. And then Katie asks, how long would you leave that to dry after rough turning it? Uh, well, I think the you want to leave about a 10% wall of the outer diameter, which in this case should be around 14 inches, I think. Yeah, so it's about 14 inches, so 1.4 inch wall thickness. And then what I hear is a year per inch. And Paul Smith has joined. Welcome, Paul. Welcome, Paul. One broken screw. Guy just said that OBS is doing an update, and it never works right after an update. I hope that uh, that does not impact you at all later, Guy. And Ruby said to make the biggest one first. Yeah, I haven't done that one yet. I know, I guess that would make a lot more sense leaving the faceplate on there. I know I've seen people do it both ways on all the YouTube videos. I've only tried it with the smallest one first, so I don't really want to try it the other way for the first time. Uh, I'm assuming you'd leave the faceplate on so you can core it out. Then flip it around, put a tenon on, flip it back around, core it out, etc. I know I've seen some that will do the smallest first, then mount, reverse it around, put it inside the part that they just hollowed, and then turn a tenon on that. And I'll deal with that later. Maybe even off live, because it'll be in the smallest bowl. So, put the chuck on. And then mount it. <clears throat> kind of heavy. Let's get it kind of hand tight to where it can stay, and then I'll bring up the tailstock and fully tighten it. Katie would like to know what is the biggest size bowl you can turn on this lathe. I'm assuming she's going to add, she means over the bed of the lathe. Yeah, so over the bed of this lathe, I can turn 20 inch diameter bowl. If I were to get the extension that mounts lower on the end because this headstock slides, I can do up to 36 inches, but that's probably more like a tabletop rather than a 36 inch giant bowl like Pete turned. Katie said that she's sorry she's in question mode. No, it is never a wrong time to ask a question. I'm right. still learning every day, so it's all good. So at this point, I need to kind of do some math and take some measurements. So I'll switch to the tailstock camera. If you, have, uh, if you have fractions you need to do, Leona is on, so she'll be able to help you out. All right, so where's my pencil? So just to check again, the maximum diameter here is like 13 and a quarter, I would say. So if I wanted, I want to mark where I want to cut on the face. Actually, I need to true up the face first just to get a better mark or measurement. Mm -hmm. 
that little void is making things a little more complicated out here at the edge. But it doesn't have to be perfectly true, just pretty flat. Because I'll be referencing the face of it when I try to line up my one-way base. So now, like I said, we got 13 and a quarter. And I want to make the wall, let's say, just a one and a quarter of an inch or a little more. So 13 minus one and a quarter is 11.75-ish. I'll go ahead and make it a little bigger than that. And Eva from the Cat and Fish Crafting has joined. Welcome, Eva. She wants to know how Sveti's doing. Sveti is doing well, I think. They're just hanging out. You can kind of see them out there cuddling. And I'll make a mark with the pencil. Dave B. has to jump off. He yes. said he'll be back later. Have a good one, Dave, if we don't oh. see you again. All right. See you later, Dave. So let's make a circle. Now I want to measure the second place I'll be cutting. So I'll measure from the mark I just made, which leaves about a 10 and a quarter inch bowl. So I'll make that next cut one inch in from that. So that would put us somewhere here. And yeah, I don't think I'll get a, well, I guess I'll get a small third bowl. Andrew, love in person, has asked a daft question. What is the attachment to the right of the headstock? Attachment to the right of the headstock. Yeah, from oh, our this, angle. So this yeah. thing here, uh, it's meant, there's another one on the tailstock here. And you're supposed to be able to put like a spindle here. It's like a duplicator. Basically, if you're making duplicate like chair rails or not chair rails, like stair stair tread posts, whatever you call those, you can put it behind you. And I think there's even something where you can like have a little flip over arm and it like will follow and it's the right diameter. Yeah, they and also it, make attachments for that for like a safety guard that comes down over the big piece of work if you're working on it too, I think. Yeah, that too. There's a you can put a, a cage in this post and it covers everything but mine's a uh, lift up on a shelf somewhere so yeah i took uh, mine off too so i'll have to go to the overhead cam so now what i know is that the outside wall diameter of this first bowl is roughly an inch and three quarters that's not right yeah, right around an inch and a half. So now that I've got the diameters marked on the face, I need to mark the depth on the outside of the bowl. So from the base of the jaws, I need to go up an inch and a half to give me an even inch and a half wall thickness. So I've seen a few people measure differently. You can kind of just eyeball it, put the ruler there and go to inch and a half and try to mark it by going down. I've also some seen somebody use a, a square or you kind of hold it and then visualize the inch and a half mark, which is right around here. So then I can go down and mark an inch and a half. You got a marker so y'all can see better. And because this pencil just got broken. So here's an inch and a half roughly from the face of the jaws. And then, you know, the next diameter was one inch in, let's see, about one and a quarter inches in from there. So you can either add that one and a quarter from the measurement you just had or move it up and align it. So one and a quarter puts the mark about there. And then the last diameter is seven and a half, which the smallest knife cuts. Uh, yeah, okay, so that'll work. Smallest one. Yeah, so that'll give us three little bowls 
And then the last, the smallest one, I'll have to hollow out myself so I don't have to worry about a depth. So I'll go ahead and move the tailstock around to give a better line all the way around. All right. So now I don't need the tailstock at the moment. So I'll move that back. Because I, and then. The, I no longer need the banjo. Clean off the waves a little bit. Where did I put it? And then here is the main bit of the one-way coring system. It's got a little screw that mounts to the lathe. I gotta go pick up those wrenches that fell earlier. It comes with its own wrench for these nuts here, so that's nice. Sounds good to have the right size wrench for your nuts. Yeah, that's what Harry says too. So there's two kind of things you have to align. One is how far from the bull blank it is, and then how the left and right or up and down depending on how you look at it and i'll start by doing the smaller bowl like they say you can do either one it comes with these knives is what they call it and a handle you just put you have to adjust the height depending on your swing and then it also comes with the little support bit that they call fingers that goes in this other post. And so now I'll adjust the how close to the bullet needs to be. And the way you can do that, I found the easiest way is measure the depth from the face. In this case, it's three and five eighths. And you know, the distance from the pivot point to this cutting edge is four and a half inches the radius so you can see that it's four and a half so what did I say that was this is three and five eighths so you want to subtract three and five eighths from four and a half I'll just say three and a half from four and a half so that's one inch so you want the pivot point of this to be one inch from the face so that will leave this once it gets to the bottom at the depth you want, if that makes sense. So I will go ahead. I've put a dot on this the center point of this. And then I'll measure one inch from. And Steve T has just asked, Hudge, did you have to do a core S cores system to learn this? No, I just watched a bunch of videos. So I'll have to loosen this a bit. Katie is implying this is a bit much for her. She says, it's Saturday. I'm furloughed. <laughs> I don't do maths when I'm furloughed or on a Saturday. Sorry about that. Yeah, Katie, he's an engineer by trade. He maths all the time. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and tighten this down a little bit so it doesn't move too easily. Now I need to adjust the cutting area. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. So I need to get this point at the circle that I drew, which is as simple as just sliding it up. And Dark Matter has joined. Welcome, Dark. All right. So now You're just double, in time for the fun part. Double check that that's at one inch, which it is. Now I can tighten down this nut and see that it hits right where the pencil mark was. I'll switch to this one so you can see that the mark is where the cutter is. And once this gets to the bottom, it should be in line with this first blue line here. So now I'll adjust the knife to where it just sits on this post.
Ruby says that she uses a different system, so this one is interesting. To see I know. How this works for sure. I've seen some people. I think the easiest system would be. I've seen some people make some PVC pipes that just sticks into this where the where the pivot point is, and then it has a laser, and you just twist it, and then obviously line the laser up with the line you drew, kind of like a, the Halloween laser system. But I don't have a laser at the moment, so. And it's always good to use the tail stock if possible. I don't think I can with the way, yeah, I can't right now because there's interference with the handle, but once I cut into it some, it should be able to go in there. So now we'll put the face shield down, turn the lathe on. You want it going, the slower the better they say. So I saw that around 400 seemed to be okay when I did it yesterday. So, and then you just kind of start going in. And you'll get some vibration. And turn the speed up a little. Jigsy wants to know if this is the first time using the system. I used it one other time yesterday or on Thursday. Mike Doyle has joined. Hi, Mike. He said that Glenn Lucas sells a set of handles, so you don't need wrenches for tightening. And Ruby says, without the bowl mounted, I set the cutter to 1.5 inches from the top of the jaws, then mount the bowl. I guess that's if you're doing it uh, the larger bowl first. I would guess so, Ruby. You can clarify, but since she indicated she was she did the larger bowl first, I would think that would make sense. This is definitely making a little bit more noise than when I did it yesterday. I think the wood is harder here than the Chinese tallow I did yesterday. It's not very loud on our end, for sure. Ruby does clarify, yes, the larger bowl first. Dark is really happy to see that Svetty has arrived. So now that I've gone maybe an inch deep, you can go ahead and swing this little support finger around that's the wrong wrench where did i put there we go so you can give it some more support inside of the groove that you've made Jeez. sarah the titchy turner williams has joined hi sarah and i dropped the wrench again i need to get more magnets for my lathe and you don't want the finger to be coming in contact with the wood to where it binds. So you kind of want to align the radiuses together with the knife. Dark says that uh, Sveti needs a pink bow. Yeah, she just she'll probably go shopping with some other uh, female creatures in the neighborhood. She joined a meetup group to meet some locals because she didn't want to be stuck in the shop all week. So then I'll just keep going. Occasionally, the tool cutter will get clogged with shavings to where it won't cut anymore, so you just back it up. Tommy says that you need to keep the cutter sharp, and you can tell very quickly if they're dull. Yeah, I, I went ahead and ordered the little sharpening jig that they sell the other day. It's supposed to arrive on Sunday, so... I'll give them a sharpen. Can't get the tool or tail rest in yet. And Mike said that the handles keep you from dropping the wrenches in the sawdust. Good turn daily Blair has joined. Welcome, Blair. Welcome, Blair. Good morning from sunny Utah. 
Maybe it's sunny in Utah. It sure is not sunny here in Kansas. So now I'll go ahead and adjust this little finger again and get it deeper. Well, you enjoy that sun, Blair, because it is not going to be above freezing here for the next probably eight, eight to nine days, probably. And I know everybody that uses these says the wetter the wood, the better. And that's usually... That's usually all that I have around here is wet wood, so that works for me. Tommy said that uh, he did get the little cutter jig, but it is easy enough to sharpen them. Uh, how do you do that, Tommy? You just use like a flat file or a round file, or is there a specific way that works? I know there's a DVD that comes with it, and then you can use like a diamond card and just rub it the cutter on it. Or you can also use the, the grinding wheel on a flat plate. Steve T has to jump. He's going to go metal detecting with his boys. Have a good one, Steve T. Stay warm. Good luck, Steve. Banana. Once you get deeper, you got to pull out the tool more often because to clear the shavings, as you can see, it kind of builds up. You are killing me, Hodge. What, with the opportunities you have? Yes, the opportunities. Tommy says he uses a grinder or diamond plate as well, so. I'm going to nearly to the bottom, I think, of this first one, but I'm going to adjust the support finger just a little bit more. Still, I feel a little bit of vibration going on. Yeah, just a reminder, people, uh, if you have enjoyed Hodge's performance today, leave a tip by hitting that thumbs up button. Basically, when this tool handle gets nearly parallel with the face, then that obviously means you almost completed that circle. Be careful that that bowl doesn't come flying out. I just popped the link to Adam. I love wood turning's channel back in. Just a reminder, he's closing in on the 100 subscriber mark and is doing a premiere tomorrow. So here's the first little bowl blank that came out. And what I've seen some people do before, I won't do it now, is they'll, they'll put the bowl back in this little bit they did, bring up the tailstock and turn a tin in so that they're ready for the next time. But that would mean I'd have to loosen. Well, maybe I'll do it depending on if I need to readjust the base oh, with the next cutter. So now, the next so how so you just do the same thing with the next size bowl too? You just turn it around inside the one in the yeah, bigger one. Yeah, you can okay. just the next one you do you turn that around form the tin and also. So the next diameter we're cutting to is. Ten and a quarter, and the first cutter goes from nine and a half to eleven and a half. You can adjust it just by sliding the base over, and then you'll leave a bigger little bit on the bottom once you break it off. Dark says on his lathe that tool would make cups. Yeah, that's how it was with my first lathe too, and I had to upgrade because of that uh, the zoo job I did. Darn that I had to upgrade my lathe. So yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, turn that tenon on that small one, which I haven't done before, but. Shouldn't be difficult because I have to move this anyways to adjust where the cutter is cutting. So I'll take this off for now. Well, if you try that, and it, yeah, it'd be interesting to, to try that and see how it works and then compare it with uh, doing the bigger bowl first, leaving the faceplate on, and then 
just flipping it around between each one and putting one on. Yeah, so, you know, we'll see which is easier. Definitely try it out. And Eva has to go and uh, says bye to you and Sveti and Harry. So have a good one, Eva. Stay warm. So obviously the thing with this is you have to kind of uh, get it centered properly. Robert, uh, do you have a problem if I throw dies upcoming live in the chat? No, go for it. Awesome. Let me go grab it, die, and I'll throw it out there. Obviously, with these being wet, the wood's going to move, so I'm not too critical about getting it perfectly aligned. Die, I don't see the live specifically out there, so I'm just going to put a uh, I'm going to put a link to your channel. So this is Die's channel, making a better life. Um, I have to say, I absolutely loved his clock video he did for Hughes Challenge. It was a lot of fun, uh, the stylistically, and the clock itself was amazing too. But uh, go check out his channel. He's just under 150 subscribers, and he's going to be doing a live today. So that'll be awesome to see, Die. Now with the wood being wet, I don't really, I guess maybe it's not really a point to this at the moment because when I turn it the second time, I'll have to clean off, clean up the tenon anyways. So I could just turn the tenon at that time, I would think, but we'll do it just for fun. So that's the good diameter. Where, there we go. And Jigsy has to go. Have a great afternoon, Jigsy. Let's turn the speed up a little. Uh, Dark, uh, I don't know how old Dai's channel is, but he does some pretty fun stuff. Um, so I like watching his channel. He did. He used to do, I think, Dai, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought he used to do video editing for MTV or stuff. So his, his, videos, are, his videos are actually really, really fun for me. All right, so there's the first little bulb link. Now what I'll do after the live, I'll just cover it with anchor seal. And I guess I'll hollow it out and get that screw out, out of the, after the live. But normally I just hollow it with anchor cover it with anchor seal and Chris spinning wood Dodger has to join has to leave. Have a good one, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Um, Hodge, do you cover the entire thing with anchor seal or just the end grains? Yeah, I usually just do the entire thing. I mean, I know some people, I don't know, if I don't know which one's better. I know I just put the whole thing cause I guess better safe than sorry sort of thing. I've already done all the work to it and you know, what's another ounce or two of uh, anchor seal. And James Cassidy also has to run. Have a good day, James. So now I need to align the base again. But this time, if I... Actually, I think I have to use the bigger cutter because the depth won't reach with this one. Yeah, Eva, there's going to be three bowls out of this. So now I'm measuring from the face to the second line. And it's pretty much five inches, which means I'll need to switch to the bigger cutter, which has a six inch radius. And then you use the bigger knife as well. So when you buy this kit, Hodge, does it come with, you have to buy the different size knives yeah, each time? It's, it's, it's all separate. Basically, you have to buy the base. You have to buy the little clamping block because they vary for different widths of gaps in your lathe bed so you buy those two separately and then each knife comes with the fingers and the cutter so you can, there's a total of four different knives depending on what sizes you need i've only used the smallest two knives so far because i don't have any wood big enough but 
hopefully I'll get some bigger wood one of these days. Rob CP has jumped. He said, hi, all can't stay trying to finish his clock and he's making some tea. He so thinks now, it's looking great. So hi, Rob. Miss you. Hope you're doing so well. now I'll put the center point of the pivot one inch away from the face of the bowl. Which basically puts it right next to it. And that should leave me with the cutter being right here at the base of the second line. So I'll tighten that up a bit. Then I'll slide it to get the cutter in line with the diameter. And Doug from Pole Barn Productions has joined. Hi, Doug. Hello, Doug. Now I gotta find my wrench. I have no idea where it went. Let's see here. The beavers. Are and Brad from Brad's Word Turning has joined. Welcome, Brad. Hey, Brad. Yeah. Oh, uh, William Ellis has to leave. See you, William. Bruce at Jordan Woodworks has joined. Hi, Bruce. All right, guys. Where did my wrench go? I, I guarantee you it's going to be what? the last place you look. All right. I found it. It's probably the first place I looked. I just overlooked it. Turn that down. Now, I got to take the handle off of the previous knife and put it on this one. It's held by two Allen screws. Hopefully, I know Emma, I think, has a test of some software here in a moment in, in 22 minutes. So I think I'll be done by then. Align this support post. Make sure I turn the speed down from when I was turning that tenon on the other part. Tommy says that out of the three cores he's seen, the one way works out to be the most expensive with the four knives, but it's very easy to use. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I used it once and it's pretty simple compared to the other one. Well, I guess the one from New Zealand, the wood saver or something, whatever it's called, that one seems pretty easy too, based on videos, but you know, the McNaughton one seems a little more complicated. I'll turn the speed up to about 400. And then just repeat the process. I'm going to throw Dai's uh, channel link right out there again. Um, closing on the 150 subscriber mark, but he is going to be doing a live later on today. So uh, definitely go over and check him out to his videos and give him some support. Brad said he will be by later to grab those cores just so that he'll store them for you. Uh, <laughs> Bruce, he's uh, he's coring some, some red oak. Now, one thing with this, you need to make sure you have a powerful lathe because even with this one, it's two horsepower, so now I can feel it bogging down a little bit. Which maybe the cutters just need to be sharper. Hey, Bruce, on that bud vase that you did, where did you get the intrinsic colors? I was kind of interested in those. I've seen them, of course, used a lot on videos. I just to look, haven't had the chance to look. Didn't know where you got them. Leona has to run and go get, do some housework. Have a good one, Leona. Enjoy a glass of vodka a little bit later or gin or whatever you prefer. No, I think. Rob CP has to leave. Have a good one, Rob. Stay safe. Later, Rob. 
Bruce said he got his uh, intrinsic colors from Wood World of Texas. I'll yeah, have to it's check them out. Dallas. Besides, I think besides Wood World of Texas, the other seller in the U.S. is the Walnut Log. I think they're out of Georgia. All right, so now I can get the tool rest in, but the, I mean the tail rest, but you need to have a Morris taper extension to reach the idea of that bowl. So I'm going to put that in now. Brian asks, do you have to change belt pulleys on the lathe? I did yesterday when I cored the first time because I was in the higher speed range but it was bogging down too much so i switched it to the lower torque or the higher torque setting i guess so, uh okay um doug with pole barn and doug miller both said that the walnut logs out of missouri st louis okay. mike just confirmed it as well so All right. that's a quick drive for me just five hours if i want to go pick them up one way now i got the tool the tail rest support in which will help and make sure the bowl doesn't go flying off and crack. And Tommy said that um, he stalls out his smaller lathe uh, if the cutter's dull, and it's a two horsepower. So I guess that's a problem. I can't, yeah, there's not enough room to use this tail rest. Pretty sure I need to sharpen the cutters. It's just, you know, I'll do Eva that. Eva has to run now. See ya, Eva. Tail rest is still in the way because I can't take out the handle enough to clear the chips. You have some compressed air. That's good now. Robert Goldman has to leave. Have a good one, sir. See you later, Robert. Go ahead and put the finger in again for support. Blow some of this Pete says that uh, hampshiresheen.com slash buy gets you the international stock lists or stockists. So it'll tell who stocks it internationally. It's good to know, Pete. Thank you. Clive Rogerson has joined. Welcome, Clive. We here in the U.S. don't make people stand in the corner when they're late. That's a, so you don't have to stand there. Yeah, I think these need to be sharpened. Okay, Doug, maybe you guys do that up in Michigan, but uh, in Kansas, I don't make people stand in the corner for being late. Now, if they're late to a work meeting, I just hang up on them. That's different, though. And Terry from TJ Turning has joined. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, Terry. Put the cutter in a little bit deeper. Doug just said, I'm not in Kansas anymore. Yeah, I think uh, because you just said that, you should make a ruby red something on one of your next videos just because of the Wizard of Oz reference you're going to throw at me. Doug, I want to see you turn a ruby red slipper. There you go. Um, Doug, I don't, do we want to know what that means? I have to do a VD project next.
I think he might have got a VD project on Valentine's Day. Harry might have with Freddie coming in. Oh, Valentine's Day. Okay, gotcha. I didn't know if VD meant something else there. All right. Let me adjust the finger a little bit more. And Doug Miller says, Dougie, they make meds for that. That's kind of where I was leaning to, Doug Miller. Hey, Tommy, what uh, speed do you usually do the coring at? He needs to drive, but he's still listening. Hopefully he can reply real quick, though. Could also be that that wood's still pretty wet, too. Yeah, I think the, car, the, sh the cutter just needs to be sharpened. Yeah, Doug, I wouldn't just say old and fat. I would, I would always throw in smarter, too. Katie says, LOL, I still find it strange calling me people calling me Katie and not Cornish, but I like it. Yeah, Katie, that's the downside with this group. Once they find out your name, that's what we call you. Yeah, Doug, even if it's even if you don't think it applies to you, I'd still use it. I do. Uh, Tommy says he usually runs between six hundred and seven hundred. All right, let me turn it up and see if that improves it any. A little bit. Brian, uh, Brian's asking how they sharpen the cutter. So there is a jig that they make that Hodge is looking at. Tommy indicated that he uses that you can use a file or like a diamond card to do it as well, or even a grinder, uh, if you're really careful, of course, because the bits, the tips on those are pretty small overall. So I'll move this cutter finger in some more. Pete says, tip for coin, obviously spinning the cutter around an axis gives you a part sphere-shaped bowl. If you want the golden ratio, instead cut the outside as you want it. Then allow an extra half to one inch extra wall thickness to account for the shape. And Bruce has to go. Have a good one, Bruce. Stay warm. At the faster speed. Brad says that he linked a cheap diamond file set that have worked amazingly well in his last video. Uh, so uh, if anybody wants to... Brad, was that in your workbench channel or your wood turning channel? For those that are interested, I can throw that link out there to that video, whichever channel it was on. Apologies if this is a little boring. I know it's kind of repetitive. Okay, so here is the link from Brad's video to the diamond files out on Amazon. Thanks, Brad. Right. 
So if anybody's looking for some diamond files, there's a link. Mike, Midnight Joker has joined. Hi, Mike. Seth from Brickhouse Craftwork has joined. Hi, Seth. Welcome, Seth. Uh, Dark, I am not sure if those are the large diamond files. Um, I guess I could click on the link and look. Uh, looks like they're just a small diamond flat file set. Looks like they're around nine dollars, forty to six hundred grit diamond flat file set. I'm just they have checking. several different options. At this point, I'm just checking to see if I can move that inner bowl so I can break it loose rather than getting loose while it's turning. I mean, if you can see, you got some water flinging out from the outside because it's so wet. Martin at Woody's Creations is joined. Hi, Martin. Clive has a question. All right. Does the cut get easier as you go around the corner into side grain? Uh, it seems like it's gotten a little easier once I started going directly into in grain. All right. Let's check that again. Pete says that bit, Pete says harder. that his wood cut coring system does between sixty to seventy cores between sharpening. That's pretty impressive. Is that a carbide tip? All right, I'm almost done. I think that's probably good. Yeah, so you can hear it crack there. Pete says, yes, it is carbide. All right, that's cool. So go ahead and pop this loose. And there you have your second core. And then obviously you have your big bowl here. But that's the general idea with the coring device. I'll go ahead and turn a tenon on the second bowl. And then take them all off the lathe and put them inside one another. And I'm going to throw Adam's link out there one more time. Uh, I Love Wood Turning Adam is going to do a premiere tomorrow, uh, right after my premiere. So 1 o'clock Central Time, uh, 7 p.m. GMT. He'll be doing a premiere. Uh, he says it's pretty amusing of a one man person, one man putting together a 300 kilogram lathe. So tune in for a good time with Adam. He is closing in on the 100 subscriber mark as well. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked him out, go subscribe. You get to see him play around with his Vicmark lathe, which I have never really dealt with a Vicmark. But Katie wants to know if she has time to make a brew before you finish. She's putting a tenon on, so maybe, what, five minutes? Yeah, I mean, five minutes is probably long enough. There's nothing really exciting after this anyways, besides seeing the three inside one another, I suppose. And just another reminder, Die Prout with Making a Better Life is also going to be live later this afternoon. Uh, if anybody needs the link to his channel, I can throw it back in there as well. 
Brian at Hartwood Turning is closing on the 200 subscriber mark. That is awesome, Brian. I'm going to throw a link to Brian's channel out there as well. He does a lot of fun stuff. He did a really awesome uh, painted bowl for the fire challenge last month. That was a lot of fun to watch with the intrinsic colors. So I just put the link to his channel out there. Mike says that it leaves an interesting pattern in the back of the cord pieces. All right, so there's a tenon, so that way I can just mount it between centers when they're dry and clean off the tenon and go from there. And obviously, this whole kit is a bit expensive, but from what I hear, uh, Jim Sprague, who's a Canadian wood turner, says that once you sell a few of these nested bull sets, it kind of makes up for the cost of it. So there's you got your big bowl. Switch to. No, that's awesome. Happy to help out, Brian. Bowl. Happy to help out with uh, sharing channels. Your third bowl. So there you have it. I myself am 13 away from 400 subscribers. Hodge is closing in on what? 600, Hodge? Uh, I think I had 649 oh, on earlier. Then. Awesome. So, and hopefully there's no cracking. This one's already got some weird inclusions, but I'll put some CA on that and then cover it with uh, Anchor Seal, which here in the States, I've tried Anchor Seal. They also make Rockler has their own, which is what I'm currently using, but it's a little more viscous than Anchor Seal, but it seems to do the job. And then I've also got some from Wood Turner's catalog or Craft Supply is what they go by. I haven't used that one yet, but I definitely like the fact that it comes in a little tub so I don't have to pour it in like a cup and get that dirty. So so it's thinner, you said, than the uh, Anchor Seal? Yeah, the Anchor Seal is a lot thicker than this one, but I mean, they both seem to dry similar. Anchor Seal might leave a little thicker coat, but... I was I wondering if that was thin enough to do like with a spray bottle as opposed to a brush. No, it's, it's not that thin. Okay. It's more like a uh, warm yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Beaver juice, I guess. <laughs> no, that's awesome. It'll be, uh, it'll be good to save that wood, especially with that, those big burls you got. Yeah, that's, that's, Basically, what I'm doing all this coring for is practicing for the two oak burls that I have that I want to core out. So hopefully I can go thinner and make more bowls, and I might leave one kind of uh, natural. Well, I'll cut it to its final shape wet and then see if it warps, and hopefully it not warps too weird to where it won't fit in one another, but we'll see. But uh, I guess I'll go ahead and in this broadcast, I think Emma Cook, the tiny turner, is doing some video tests. I don't know if she's actually turning anything or not. But uh, uh, Mike, thank you guys for joining. Mike says, don't say beaver juice three times, for God's sakes. Yeah, I'll try not to say beaver juice another time. <laughs> uh, Brian says he uses PVA glue, thin down 60-40 glue to yeah, water. I've heard that, that too. I, I have some glue that's, I think, getting kind of old so i might try that have a good day everybody lots yep, of fun thanks. good to see the coring system at work hodge thank all you guys sorry about the bandsaw mishap earlier and the audio mishap hey like we said then if it's going to happen it's going to happen on a live yeah all right guys i'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast thank you guys for watching have a great rest of your day and we'll see you guys tomorrow on the premieres see y'all later bye